Yo guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna be taking a look at the OP06 Perona leader, and we're gonna take a look at the winning deck list from the Fukuoka CS that happened over here in Japan. Uh, just talk about the leader a little bit, then we're gonna jump into some gameplay. This won't be as extensive as the Yamato video that I did, just because I don't have as much experience with the leader, but I think it'll still be helpful, and hopefully it'll be fun for you guys to watch some gameplay. So without any further ado, let's jump into it and let's get started. All right, let's jump into it here. So we have Perona. She's a really cool leader from OP06, black and green. 5K, power, special, activate main, once per turn, choose one of the following effects. Rest up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less, or up to one of your opponent's characters gets minus one cost during this turn. So really cool. And she's a Thriller Bark Pirates type. It, really cool that there's two effects here. I think if it was only one or the other, I don't think she would be that strong. But having the option to choose between them is really cool. You are going to use the rest up to a four cost or less character one the most. But you'd be surprised at how useful just getting that minus one uh, can be. And it's not like Sakazuki where you have to attack in order to do it. You just get it automatically. Um, you're not running as much of the like... You know, obviously we don't have Hound Blazes, we don't have like 7 drop Borsalino or anything like that. So you don't have as much removal as say like uh, Sakazuki or even Moria really. But you do have some cool combos and this leader wasn't doing too hot at the beginning of OP06 but a little bit later in the meta um, people started, they cracked the code right? They figured out this build and then we saw in the uh, Fukuoka CS there was a, a player, his name's Kinajamu or Kinajam. Uh, he's from Okinawa, a uh, really, really cool player. Uh, I was watching that one live and he had two of the craziest games, like the, he had one of the craziest games that's ever been broadcasted on like the live CS tournaments. And that was against a yellow Katakuri player. It was super wild. I suggest you go check it out. Um, I was actually doing some testing before I, um, yesterday before I was going to record this video. And I pulled off what I call like the Kinejamu miracle where his opponent had four life and he had five attacks and he had to just go for it and he got through all of them. This like miraculously happened to me yesterday except my opponent had five life and I had six swings on board. I'm, I'm gonna add either the, the section there where you see me like go for lethal to win the game or I'll probably just upload the whole game. So that'll be, I'm probably going to put that as the first video, as the gameplay section, but just look forward to that. It's really crazy, but this player is really cool, and this is the list that he was running, right? So we'll just go through it a little bit. The mechanics with Perona, like I said, you don't have as, you're not as like, um, you're not as good at getting the removal and the KO as Sakazuki, right? So you have to kind of do other things to kind of make everything work, and, and what Perona is really good at is resting characters and then stunning them with the uh, 10 drop Dofi, right? So your game plan with Perona is kind of like control the control the board early on by being by resting characters that your opponent plays and KOing them, getting them off the board, and then kind of setting up these big bodies in the mid to late game, like dropping a Borsalino blocker or something to to Borsalino or Sabo like mid game to start setting up some tempo. And then you're just, you know, you got a drop Moria is going to come down and you can do some really cool combos. What you want to do is you want to, if you can, so this a drop Moria on play, choose up to one cost four or less and up to one cost two or less character card from your trash. Play one of them active and play one of them rested essentially, right? And it's an a drop 9k. This card is crazy. This card is borderline busted. It makes Sakazuki even better. It makes the black moria leader just insane like really really good an immediate like top tier contender in the op06 meta and this card this is the combo card while dofi is our stun card like dofi sets up for the finish and then we just swing and kill like you know win the game right moria is the setup card where you want to kind of early on you don't mind blocking with the borsalino um because if it goes to trash you can always get it back with moria uh, you don't mind having a Ryuma. You want a Ryuma to go to the trash because what you can do is um, Like say your opponent has a four cost character you rest it with leader effect play Moria and Play like Ryuma as your four drop you can play it rested or active It doesn't matter because it's on play effect is KO up to one of your opponent's rested characters with a four 
cost a four or less. So say you play this rested and then you play a Rosinante active or vice versa, because you can still use Rosinante's effect even if it's rested, right? So there's a lot of really awesome combos, but you have a few that you're kind of like building up towards. And it does make Perona a little difficult to play if you're not used to it. You need to kind of like keep track of what you're trashing and like you, you have to, it's a weird thing where this mechanic kind of comes into play in OPO6 with Moria and Perona that we really haven't had to worry about except for maybe Sakazuki in OPO5 where you're, you're, you're being cognizant of what you're putting into your trash because you know you're going to be able to get it back later. Whereas like Sakazuki is like Monchery and Rebecca is essentially like the trash removal, right? Those are the two big ones. Here we have Moria and Moria just does what Rebecca and all them do, but like way better, right? And it becomes a huge 9k body on board. So just in general, what you're going to do is like try and control the board, set up some blockers, KOing things like we have this Drake too. Yuma is really good. Setting, like controlling things, setting up blockers, playing down Moria to set up our board even more and probably get some more KO off of that. Then dropping 10 drop Dofi to stun lock everything and then we go for the, the, the win the next turn essentially. Like you're setting up for lethal with Dofi and then you swing for lethal the next turn or you play two Dofis in a row. There's some busted combos that you can do with Perona and it's a, it's, it's a nice kind of like mid-rangey, semi-control kind of like defensive deck, but you can also get, uh, you can't play aggro really, but you can get some nice attacking power with it, which is really fun. It feels good to play. Um, if you're looking forward to Perona in OPO6, you're in luck because she's an awesome leader. She won a giant regional in Japan, the Fukuoka one, and she, ever since that that CS, she's been uh, topping a lot more. Not as much as like Sakazuki or Moria or Katakuri and L, and, um, but she's kind of like Yamato where like she's proven how strong she is and she doesn't top as much as the other leaders, but she could win a nationals, right? She can win a regional, she can win a nationals. So yeah, really cool leader. I guess I'll just kind of briefly go over everything. We have four the X Drake, the KO, on play KO for less, obviously four Dofi. For Rosinante, for Baby 5, here you're going to be, essentially you're searching for Rosinante or Doflamingo, and if you need to get a 2k counter, you have Virgo there. Uh, Ryuma is just, you're just playing it for the uh, the KO, and it's a great combo piece with Moria. Uh, two 4 drop Kuzans, just because it's good, right? You can get the minus 4. Um, this is really great too. You'll see in the Katakuri game that I used... I got Kuzan on board and I used it to lower the cost of like a 7 drop Lin Lin and then you just use leader effect to rest it and so if you do that too if you take a 7 cost down to a 3 you rest it with leader you play Ryuma boom you just KO to 7 drop for like what maybe 4 Dawn or if you, for free technically if you play it off Moria right uh, 4 Tsuru for the 2k counter and the on play effect 4 Borsalinos it's just too good you gotta run it 4 Virgos mostly for the 2k counter obviously it's searchable by both brand new and baby five so it's kind of kind of dirty kind of busted for brand new because uh, we need to search out our navy cards for sabo just because sabo is really good i think sabo is even better in opo6 just because five cost blockers are so important they get around amaru and obviously um the protecting your characters from being ko'd for a turn gotta have four moria um and then another Two, uh, two two k's in Tashigi, and then two of the uh, whoever wins the war becomes justice or how, whatever the official name is. I don't know. Um, but the zero drop three k counter, I love these zero drop three k counters. So I think this is an awesome two two events to kind of tech in. There are other builds, but I'm not as familiar with Perona, and this is essentially what I like to run when I play this. So I thought it would just be nice to kind of showcase Kinajam's deck and just play with it the whole time. Because um, I think this is an amazing base. You should use this deck if you like the Navy and the Don Quixote pirate kind of build. And then just, you know, play it a few times and then you can obviously adjust and tech things to your liking. Also, real quick, uh, since we've gone over the deck here, I do want to just talk real quick about like what you want to, what you want to kind of expect and like things to mulligan for. So really uh, a nice hand. You want to get one of your searchers, uh, maybe even both, I think. It's really hard. It depends on the matchup. So you kind of have to think like, okay, if I really need my 10 drop Dofi, you want the baby five. If you really need just like your Borsalino blocker or Kuzan, you know, you, you want brand new. And so I think the things to mulligan for here are essentially one of your two searchers 
and then some maybe some cards that you can combo with you probably want to see yuma early on because if you can play him and then let him die you can bring him back with moria um maybe seeing one of your top end if you draw if you draw into three dofies i would mulligan that's not going to be good you don't want to see too many of them too early same with moria even one probably any more than one and you're going to want to consider mulliganing there um besides that you just want like you know like all hands right you want like a decent balance and uh, this is definitely a deck though where you want to see those searchers and maybe a rosinante early on is really nice so say you got like a, a brand new a brand new borsellino ryuma rosinante and like a, another 2k counter or something like that would be a really really good hand right there are certain things that you don't want to see early on but there's certain things that if you don't see them mid to late game it's gonna really really hurt right because Perona's really great and she can be really controlling and, and uh, defensive and powerful at the same time. But one of Perona's weaknesses, I think, is just if your opponent can kind of, first of all, like rush characters can hurt a little bit because they're already going to be rested. If your opponent gets high value cards on the field that they don't mind getting rested or that they can't get rested, if they're playing a bunch of five cost blockers or if they're playing a bunch of rest, uh, rush cards that are already going to be rested, I think those are kind of like the cards that are going to do the most damage to Perona. It's kind of like Sakazuki, right? Where like Zoro can be really, really aggro and rush down Sakazuki before it can establish the board. Perona is essentially the same thing where like you do need a little bit of time to establish your board and set up defensively in order to be able to feel comfortable enough to have enough control and then start swinging for those lethal turns later on in the game. Okay, now that we've talked about the leader, the deck, and like some of the things to look for when mulliganing and like kind of the strengths and weaknesses of the leader, now let's jump into the gameplay and let's uh, let's have some fun. Let's try it out. It'll help us just get warmed up too. See if I know what to do here. Let me know if there's anyone who's looking forward to playing Perona when it comes out in the, the West. Um, so you want to see baby five. Mm. You want to see baby five or Rosanante for sure. That's okay, I guess. Not the worst. You want to go second most of the time too. Oh, this is terrible. This is a bad start. He got a thunderbolt. Hmm. So we will use leader effect. Rest of pudding. Swing 6k and play Rosanante. We don't have any other plays here. It's. Yo, for Blada, what's up? How's it going, man? I'm doing uh, some Perona testing, like Perona practice, because this is the next uh, leader I'm going to do a video for on YouTube, and then I'm going to do the Iron Man challenge. Our first leader today is Iceberg. Whoa. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's kind of crazy. Nothing much. Working and watching some One Piece TCG. Did you see the uh, North American finals? All right, this is kind of crazy here. Hmm. I'm. Man, I am. I kind of want to play Kuzan. Need to prep for locals. No, it was too late for me. Yeah, actually, I missed, I was working, I missed the, uh, the actual stream, but I went and watched it, like, right after it ended. What are you, uh, what are you gonna play at Locals? Oh yeah, Bello? Nice. Bello Betty? That's what's up. There's a new... Uh, Lucy card that's coming out OPO7 that's actually gonna be really really good it's a yellow yellow card for, it's gonna be good in Bello Betty I don't know if you saw that I 
I wish I had drawn like a Yuma or something. Mm. We actually can use this. If he only swings seven, we'll, we'll use it. Oh, he's going five? What is he going to play for four? Kikinojo? Um... Yeah, but I'm gonna go back to my roots with the OPO7. Rob Lucci. Okay. I I think that Rob Lucci leader could be good, but it really depends on like what the support is. What do you think about it as somebody who likes Lucci? Obviously, right? I still we're gonna play Lucci soon, so I'm gonna use your list. I still got it. Don't worry about that. God, this is rough. Can't even KO Sanji. I'm not gonna lie here. I think we got a um, got a little bit of a, a shitty a shitty hand and a shitty start to this game. I'm not really sure what the best lines are against Katakuri here, but like I'm not playing very well. But I don't think I think we kind of got some. We started breaking the top end. We didn't see any of our KO cards. This is gonna be this is gonna be difficult for us. Swing seven, that'll be good. I'll give you this. Good. Oh, I'm so dumb. I could have rested his Sanji too. The new leader ability, I think, is a little better as the double swing. And with OPO6 comes a ton of support for recycling the trash. Hold on one second. Oh, man. That's like the last card I wanted to see. <laughs> My guy's got six life. Let's see if we can dig our hole out of this, dig dig our way out of this hole. I don't even have any good targets for um Rosinante, I guess. I should have blocked with Borsa. Yeah, you gotta know your lines for Perona, otherwise it kinda gets a little a little shrifty. I still have zero KO cards. This is kinda wild. Do you mean Oh, the new leader ability is better than the double swing with the old Luchi leader? Is that what you meant? I wasn't sure. So, resting Sanji. I mean, we should play Moria either way, huh? We are fighting a losing battle here. But we will have two blockers on the board. I I have to save this Kuzan. I can't attack with it right now. So active and then I guess rested. <laughs> I feel so bad. Trash top two cards of the deck and give one one character minus one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know the I know the new one, but I I was just saying because you said it is a little better as the double swing. I think, did you mean better than the double swing? Uh, that's what I was just double checking. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. You're just like automatically trashing instead of having to trash from your hand. Kind of like Moria, right? Well, you do have to trash. Oh, that sucks. You have to trash one with Moria, but you can get stuff back so much. Or it's like Sakazuki where you're just cycling. Yeah. Damn, he's like, all right, well, I'll just set up too. Mmm, swingy seven, we can... Mm, no, he can swing with this Lin Lin. Mmm. I think we just counter out and take one, maybe? I think we only run two of these in here, so that might be the last one. We kind of want him to swing with Sanji too, if possible. Damn. Oh, there we go, finally. Damn, man. I don't know if playing Dofi does anything here. I can rest. Can rest Sanji. We can play Dofi. I 
Because he would take the life either way, right? Like, if we attack and he gets a character on board, we're just so screwed. I can get this down to a 3 and KO it with Yuma. And maybe we save Dofi for next turn. Hmm. This might be the play. Right, I could have used Tashigi too. That's eight Dawn. We could play Rosanante as well. We lose too many character spots though. We might play Ryuma and then probably Borsa over Tashigi. Let's do this and see what happens. If he gets a character on board, we're really screwed. I might have to play Rosanante over <laughs> Kuzan just to survive this next turn, which is wild. Uh, we just we just started seeing the cards we needed like five turns too late. Oh my god, he had the Onami. Well, alright, that's fine. That's fine. Hmm. I mean, my guy's got six life. Like, what? Oh my god. Ah. Ah. Fuck me, dude. First two life are Onami and then Sanji. I don't know if there's anything we can do about that. So we can play Yuma, KO Lin Lin, play Borsa, and then play Rosanante over Tashigi. Fucking A, man. This is why I thought Katakuri was gonna win North American Nats. <laughs> like, but I guess I'm just used to playing the more powerful version in OPO6, I guess. Yeah, I think if that new Luchi... Aw, oh, damn. <laughs> oh, my God. I think if that new Luchi gets the right support, it could be powerful, but just as of now, it doesn't seem very strong to me. Hmm. What do we do here? Ooh, why are you putting your Dawn on early, bro? Don't telegraph your plays, bro. That's rule number one. Even if you know you've got it, you really shouldn't do that. I will always be your proponent of not telegraphing your plays like that. Shh, don't tell him we have no counter in hand. We still survive this turn. <clears throat> Take this one and then block. If only we hadn't lost so much momentum at the, the beginning, we would have had two Dofies to play. Um, yeah, there's nothing we can do here, huh? Because we would need to stun and play a blocker, and that's impossible. We could kind of like clear board. He only has two cards in hand. And play this blocker. If we had two blockers, we'd have a shot, I guess. If we could clear board. Um, what I can do is do this. Well, what do we need? Four and four, eight, so we have two Dawn to work with. Maybe we can do this. If he has no counter in hand, we actually have one shot. We have one shot. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, we have like one shot here. Oh, this is gonna be tough. I need a swing over one of these and we're gonna have to give him a life too. <laughs> oh my God, this is wild. This is so bad. 
he has a 2k counter. He has a 2k counter, we just lose it right on the spot. So let's see. Okay. Wow. Do you have it? No. Okay. Or he just didn't want to play it. He doesn't need to. <laughs> we live to see another day. Unless this guy runs fucking Rush, Katakuri, or an L for some weird reason. That was pretty... Like, I'm not gonna lie. That was... We didn't solve anything there, but that was pretty cool. What do you take me for, dude? You think I'm a noob? Yeah, swing 9k. Oh my god. Okay. We can survive another turn, actually. This is crazy. Wild. Check it out. We just have to pray that this doesn't get a um, trigger. If he triggers a body on board, we lose instantly. If we win this, I'm calling the greatest comeback of all time. Oh, that's even better. That's, I mean, that's also fine. Bro. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just ruining this guy's day. I feel bad for kind of just like pro, but I, I'm not gonna give up if I have a, if I can if I know I'm not gonna lose I'm not gonna give up you know. One two three we could go for it we could literally go for it this next turn no no we can't yeah we can yeah we could we can. No oh my god. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, hold on. <laughs> All right, we have one shot, dude. This is so funny because we're using Kinajam's deck and this is the exact situation that he was in where his opponent had four life and he had five swings, so it's a little bit different. His opponent had four life. He had five swings. He knew he would lose the next turn if he didn't go for lethal. All right, how do we do this? So we swing five first with a character. Dude, we have a shot. We have a small shot here. And we swing seven. And then we swing nine. No way. No freaking way, dude. All right, so let's... 7, 9, 11. We swing 11. <laughs> no way, dude. 11 and 12. Bro. Do not play with me here. We can rest a blocker if he plays it too. Dude, come on. Oh! <laughs> Holy nuts. Holy nuts. Dude. Holy crap. We just pulled off the Kinajamu with the Kinajamu deck first try. My heart is beating like crazy right now. That was so wild. This is, ladies and gentlemen, this is why you don't give up. And if you see an out, you play for that out. And if you get lucky, my guy, dude, my guy drew into 5k worth of counter. This is why I love One Piece, man. This is why I love One Piece card game. Oh, Hody Jones. All right. A little bit, funnily enough, kind of already off meta. I think we don't have searchers. I'm tempted to keep this, but I think we need to mulligan. All right, that's actually not too bad. I haven't played against a lot of Hody Jones, I'm not gonna lie. And especially not with Perona. 
So this will be interesting. We're both kind of the green rest mechanic, right? So this will be, oh, okay. Just drawing all of our top end. <laughs> all right. Um, sucks now, but it could be, it could win us the game later, right? The thing is too, like, Hody is a little bit like Purple Luffy, where like if you can force him to take a lot of life early on, then he can't really use his uh, leader effect. It's comboed with a lot of the character cards, so that could be good for us. We're at 5 dawn next turn, so we could even just like... Mm, if you only swing 6 here, we're countering. <clears throat> Oh, what are you going to cheat with that? This can play a, a four cost or less. Oh, okay. Um, I say when attacking once when you're so Yeah. Yeah, this is okay. It's a good card to cheat out, right? But we're just going to KO this. Perona might actually be a really hard matchup for Hody. So we're going to use leader effect. We're going to rest this. We're going to put a Dawn. Here, swing six into Mihawk, so he's got to give us two cards if he wants to save it. And then we just Yuma this one. And that's a feels good man play. Hmm. Maybe he really feels like he needs the board presence. <clears throat> Not sure. I mean, you have six cards, I guess you could save it. Yeah. This is also why we don't play Ryuma first. Just so we're not telegraphing like, hey, if you let go of Mihawk, you're gonna have zero cards. Like they gotta, you gotta leave them guessing, right? I think that's really important. I know some players just see the line and they're like, okay, I'm gonna play it. But you have to really, okay, so he's resting. So this effect gets to happen with no life taking. Play up to one four, cost lower Fishman. Okay. Yeah, Ikaros is okay. Um, there's there's one of the Fishman cards that I actually think is really strong. Not this one, not Hot John. That's, Hot John's decent though, but... Alright. <clears throat> hmm, we're at 7. Unfortunately, we can't... We don't have any more on-play on KO things we can do. We don't really need Baby 5. We have our top end here. So I think we need to get some cards in Trash. So I'm actually tempted to play Brand New here. Um, I'm tempted to just like swing into here. This is four, so you have three Dawn to work with, two. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do this. I think I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna rest this guy, I'm gonna rest Hot John. Attack five, then seven if he keeps it alive, and then play brand new and Borsalino. Just cause I really need to get some cards in my trash. For Moria. Like, I will let him KO this card. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, that's good. And we'll take this. That's really, really good. Okay. Now, if he KOs it, if he KOs Ryuma this turn, we just let it go. And then we'll have a perfect. Um, oh, shit, it's Hody. I forgot about Hody being in this deck. And he doesn't have to take the life. That's so. That feels so wrong, because I'm so used to just seeing this in Yamato decks. Yes! Okay, perfect. Uh, we don't get to select any tar- there's nothing rested. But little does he know, that was like exactly what we wanted. And you can swing 5 at leader. Oh, if you swing 6 in the Borsa, that kind of sucks. Um... Mm. I'm gonna keep it alive. If we get another Moria, that'll be a perfect target. All right, so we have one extra Dawn to work with here. <clears throat> he has two cards in hand. So what I'm gonna do here, so we're gonna play Moria and play Yuma and Rosinante. Dude, Yuma rested. So I could swing six into here and just kind of hope that he doesn't have the, the counter. Because if we can KO both of these, that would be huge. 
It's a little risky. I should probably attack into life since he's still at four, but we're still at four life too. So we're gonna we're gonna do the risky play here. Okay, there you go. Sometimes you get rewarded. Uh, maybe he just had the counter and he didn't want to get rid of it too. That's always possible too. So active is gonna be Rosanante, and then this, yeah. Um, and then we pass. So even with Hody on the board, you know, we're still doing a we're still in a good spot. <clears throat> okay, searching with Kami. If he gets another Hody here, that would actually suck pretty bad. Okay, got the Jinbei promo. So it's just a 2k counter. Oh, he's got Noah. Respect. Respect. I totally forgot about Noah. That's really strong. But we, oh, he knows to attack into Rosanante there. Oh, not much we can do. And he can KO Moria. We'll probably counter out if, yeah, he went full 11. So we can only get to 211. Oh my gosh, that sucks, man. But it's okay. We still have a decent uh, board presence. We still have a blocker. And we're going to rest Hody. And, um, well, the Hodies. <laughs> Keeping up with the Joneses. <laughs> Keeping up with the Hody Joneses. Oh. I don't think... We don't get punished if we attack, right? The only punishment is if he gets an arc off of life. Which is a possibility. I should have swung five first. That was my bad. Mm. Yeah, my bad for not swinging five first. That was a misplay by me. But he might be tempted to take it anyway, so we just get another card out of his hand. Yeah, okay. So again, not punished, but that was one where it's like, you should definitely, definitely do it. Uh, swing with the five first. Well, we did, yeah, that's true. We, he could have got everything rested. In that situation, I think it was okay that we swung with Dreama. I forgot that we were worried about Noah's Ark. It all depends on the trigger, and it depends on the matchup, right? If you're swinging into yellow, you normally almost always want to swing with your characters first, but it does depend on the situation. There is no 100% rule on that one. <clears throat> Alright, so if we can get another Moria or get another Doflamingo, we'll be in a really, really good spot. If we don't, we have a Drake. It just depends what he plays, right? Still, at this point, like another Hody would still hurt us pretty bad. Hmm. I really would have liked two Doflamingos there, I think. Is there a world where we can swing lethal next turn? If we have four full attacks. Just at being at four life, you never... And it feels bad if you just, like, go for lethal and end up losing. Okay. Um... Okay, okay, me, because we can. That was decent, I guess. That was a decent play. He did have to trash. He had another arc? Wow. Okay, so our leader can't attack next turn, but you have to trash another card from hand. This Arlong is really good. <clears throat> it's strange, because, like, the Fishman... Like, these three cards are probably, in my opinion, this and Ark are, like, the three, four best Fishman cards in the whole... Well, in the Kami Searcher, but that's just because it's a Searcher. There's a lot... Oh, my gosh. This is not what we needed right now. There's a lot of really good cards, a lot of Fishman cards, but it just doesn't seem to work with Hody Jones. I know some people have, like, kind of made made it work a little bit, but... Uh, I think we're going to go into Hody here, because he can't get out of a 12k. I'm assuming... I'm assuming he can't. If we do that, and then we play that, brand new, we'll still have four. Mm. Yeah, I really want the guaranteed kill here. And then we can rest. Vanderdeck in, swing with brand new. Play our brand new, and hope we get a Borsa. Or two. Oh, no. Oh. We out. We done played ourselves. 
We done played ourselves. We would have had Moria next turn. That is very sad. And now we don't have anything we can play. Wow. I didn't expect that to be so painful. Brand new has been killing us in some of these games. I think we whiffed with him on a, a different game. I don't know if he, I don't even remember if that was today, to be honest. But okay, we're in an okay. There are two cards. There are two cards in hand. We still have four life. We haven't taken a single life. But the more time he gets, the more chances he gets of getting another Hody or playing an Ark. I think he maybe could have played this other one. I'm not gonna lie. Oh no, he trashed the Ark that he had on state on this. Yeah, on the field. Got it. Got it. That's what it was. I see. Which is pretty strong, because once you play the arc, there's nothing you can do with it, right? So he didn't have to trash a card from hand, he trashed it from the field. Even Hody Jones here, like... Mmm, wow. 11, we'll counter out of that. Oh. Again. I do not like telegraphing your plays like that. That's really, really bad. That's a no-no in my book. That's a no for me, dog. Oh, and he just quit. Okay. Well. Yeah, he didn't have... A, this is the thing. is like The Fishman cards are decent, right? But like you have your power cards, like Hody Jones, that you want to see. So he had 5k... No, he had 4k in hand, and he would have had one more counter coming. What would I have done next turn? Oh, we had a decent hand. Oh, we... Or, decent life, I mean. So, we would have probably... We would have drawn... I guess that's why he went ham and just tried to get Doflamingo off the field, but it's... Yeah, yeah, I guess... I guess I understand where he came from there. Um, it was a little bit of a hopeless situation. Because if he didn't play any characters, we probably... we So, our choices are here. We would have... Just KO'd Arlong and swung for a couple attacks at life. Or if we have three... I probably wouldn't have gone for lethal that turn. But I would have played Drake, KO'd Arlong, and then had two two big swings with Leader and Doflamingo. And then the next turn, we don't know what he would have drawn. But we would have still had um, Borsa Blocker up. So I think within the next turn or two, we would have won. Um... Really unfortunate that we couldn't just play it out, but yeah, I guess he saw that he probably wasn't gonna win. I think that was still interesting enough, so I'll probably keep this in the video. But yeah, I hope that was a. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen any like this is this is literally like the fourth or fifth time I've probably played against the Hody Jones player. So I, I actually do want to keep it too to just show that and to show how strong Perona is into that matchup. Maybe show you why Hody hasn't really been able to shine in the OPO6 meta. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it for this matchup. Oh, Perona Mirror. We got lucky. We can go second. I think you still want to go second in the mirror. I'm not really sure. Um, I think search here is important. Okay. I don't think I've ever played a, a Perona Mirror, so this is going to be interesting. Mm. Dang. I think we'll take Kuzan. Because <clears throat> he could be a huge player later on. If he doesn't just get KO'd. Hmm. Alright, this is interesting. <clears throat> so if we play it if we play Borsa. No, nah, I think we just go five and seven. We both know, like if I played the Borsa, it would have forced him to use leader effect and put a lot of dawn probably like not allowing him to get a uh, a good character on board but i think we have to just go a little aggro here even though that's not what perona wants to do uh we will counter out of that though that's good yeah because now they're gonna play yeah yuma okay but like um oh i thought we i think that was was that our first hand we had the yuma that's unfortunate i wish we could ko this guy Mm. Sabo would actually be decent, but we just don't have the Dawn for it. Um, Baby 5 and Borsa could be okay here. Maybe that's what we go for. 
I really wish we could just KO this Juma. Weirdly enough, that might be like enough tempo to really just throw us off. We don't want to play... We don't want to play Kuzan just yet. Oh, is that a whiff? Yeah, that's a whiff. Oh man. That's really unfortunate. I would have much rather just played Rosinante there then. And we're gonna just have to let her go. Ay ay ay. Yeah, I mean that's getting rested. I'm only swinging seven though, so we'll counter out. Cause that's like two to three dawn commitment if he wants to go and KO. Mmm, nah. That was risky, but he got it. Oh my goodness. Oh, and there's our Duma. Okay. <clears throat> too little, too late. We don't have... Uh, if we had Moria, that would have been such a clutch play. I'm considering just leaving it too, leaving him there. I think Sabo is more powerful right now. Because if he attacks with these three and we got Dofi, and we can rest at least one of them. He'll probably swing with leader no matter what. Hmm. We could swing six and put down two blockers. But he can rest that one. I think this is the play. I might be wrong, but I think this is the play. I think if we can get him down to two life, It'll be good, better for us to try and swing lethal. We're gonna keep both of these Dofies. I've learned my lesson of like trashing one too many. Uh, this Kuzan might be so clutch later on too. Oh, and then we'll do this, yeah. So we're setting up our, uh, our Moria, if we can draw into it. Okay. So this is gonna hurt. Oh, that's perfect. He only swung five. Oh, but that's bad. He's got Moria. That's real bad. Okay. What is he gonna play though? He has no. Oh, he's playing. His... Oh, wow. That was like the next best thing, right? <clears throat> Not bad. Not bad. But if we rest this Kuzan. If we rest this Kuzan. And then stun one, two, three. He'll have one, two. Yeah. I don't think we lose the next turn. So that's getting rested no matter what. I might even swing into this. It's the same thing as swinging into leader. Might he got the blocker up. Oh, but actually. Yeah, you know what? If, if I can get him to rest this Borsalino, I'm gonna use that as a target instead, probably these three. Yeah, but he's not gonna fall for that. Um, uh, Moria is tempting too, but I think the stun here is just more powerful. Well, maybe we should have just stunned him. Yeah, we should have just stunned those three characters. I'm so used to just stunning the leader that I kind of just like auto clicked on that if I'm being honest but now he's just like all right I'll just set up super defensively then so this is his only attack so we can block and counter with Sob Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. that makes it a lot harder so what is our choice next turn we can we can get the KO no he's gonna play another Borsalino oh my god this is rough we can't even we can't count out of this. Do we block or do we just take it? If we take it, that's really really risky. I think we have to block here. Unfortunately, he got another Borsalino off the brand new. So while we had some luck our way with, uh, and then we'll do one two three. <coughs> Uh, 
I think we can just swing. Yeah, because if he does block, I'm going to do these three. I, it, it's really bad. I mean, he's going to have three either way. Oh, my gosh. And is that just... But is that... What is that then, though? Okay, hold on. So now I can KO whichever one of these characters I want, unless he just has, like, a godly amount of counter. Do I KO? No, I got to KO the Kuzan. I got to. I have to. All right. And then we get one, two, three. And he says two attacks. No, we're going to lose then. I can play Moria and get two blockers on board. But then he has five attacks. I think we just lose either way. Oh, that's so unfortunate. We have one, two, three, four, five. So if he mismanages his don, okay. Or if he just does that, then what's he got his own Dofi? That's fine though, because he could have won there pretty easily. But I understand him wanting to take the safer route. Um, hmm. Well, if he has two Dofies, then we're really just screwed, huh? I think we swing into the Kuzan. That's gone. Unless he has crazy counter. play with Moria. Borsellino and Rosanante. Wow, okay. That's actually really dumb on my part because I could have Man, I could have put more Dawn on there. I forgot. I was thinking we were using Tendon for Dofi, but nope. Alright, then that's game for sure. He got it. That sucks. Because he can just rest this with leader effect. GG. Oh. No GGs. Of course. Man. I don't know. We definitely screwed up there. Wow, he had... Assuming this was the card he drew. He had another. He could have saved it either way. So it didn't matter. Damn, that sucks, dude. I mean, that just goes to show you, like, even if you have your big boss monsters, who, that, as soon as he played that Yuma and I knew we weren't going to be able to KO it back, I had a bad feeling. I was like, I think we might lose. Because you, in a, in a mirror match of any kind, right, like, the person who loses tempo the first, like, your odds of, your odds of winning just drop dramatically, right? And, yeah, I'm sure I could have played that a little bit better in certain parts, but, man, like, the, the thing about Perona that really hurts, and I mean, it's for Saka, Sakazuki too. Like, if you don't see your Luchis, right? Like, most when you see players and they put, like, yeah, like, their, their, like, their rounds and, like, what they lost and stuff, they a lot of times, like, I didn't see a Luchi or didn't see any Hound Blazes. And it's like, if you don't see those KO cards, you just lose. So, we didn't see a Drake, we didn't see a Yuma, we didn't see anything that would have helped us KO anything in time. And even though we were able to set up big towards the end, it just wasn't enough. So that's unfortunate, but GG's well played to this guy. Um, I hope that helps for like the Perona mirror too, you know, to help people see like what you should do, what you look out for. I guess a really strong card is Yuma, but I mean, Searchers and Yuma probably is a good thing to go for, for the Perona mirror match. And like 10 drop Dofi is gonna be huge too. So maybe those three kind of like key cards. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the, the next match. All right, Reiju. Uh, I think we want to go second still against Reiju as well. I think I'll keep this. The brand new and the Borsos could be pretty good. He can send these back to our hand with Niji, but... Oh, okay. That's decent. This is decent. Um, I'll take the consider. Oh. Ah, I forgot. I could have taken Drake. Man. I think Drake would have been the best. I, I forgot he's also Navy for a second. I... That's actually... That could hurt us later. I don't think we counter out of this. 
Oh, we get rewarded. We get the Drake. Now I'm glad I took the counter. Never punished, baby. Never punished. Um, I think setting up with the... Putting the Borsalino is too... Sketch, is too... He didn't get Kingdom. All right. He didn't get the German Kingdom. That's really good. I think we just go 5 and 7 here. Um, I do want to play Borsalino, but if he plays Niji and is able to... Yeah. Okay. So that's probably what he was going to do. If we play Borsalino and he plays Niji, he can return the Borsalino back to our hand and it hurts really bad. Or instead, we can put pressure and make get, make him want to attack into this brand new. So he's off to a slow start. This is really, really good for us. Um, I think we counter out of this. We don't mind trashing a Borsalino because we can get it with Moria later. Yep. Okay, so he can just KO this brand new, so that's fine. Yeah, this is exactly why. And this is why you don't play Kikunojo like turn two. Um, mm, almost, but no cigar. I could... We could Sudoru, make him a three, rest him, and then play Drake. That actually is probably... It's probably worth it. I'm not going to lie. Because we have the we have the two 2k counters besides that. That's exactly six Dawn. I think it's worth it. I actually think this is worth it. So let's do this. Sudoru will make him a three, and then we can use leader effect to rest him, and then this is KO. Yeah, okay. You really wanna, you wanna utilize your KO moves as, as, well, as, as much as you can. Um, Cause you don't have as much KO power with Perona like you do in Sakazuki and stuff, right? So you wanna make it as high value and as efficient as possible. Turn four, if he still hasn't played German Kingdom or anything like, oh, ah, that sucks though. Okay, <laughs> all right, well, I sp oh my God. All right, that is like the worst possible thing we could ever see there. Uh, he's probably gonna play an Ichiji right here too. Oh man, this just went from like us having great tempo to this just got so scary. Um, okay, he's probably gonna play a Reiju then. I think we take this. We really gotta get our blockers going now. Where's Moria? We need Moria. Yeah, Reiju. She's probably gonna do the transformation. Yep. It's three cards right there. Reiju is just kind of busted with the card draw. All right. Okay, but we're, we're okay, we're okay. We rest this Reiju, KO with Yuma, and then play Borsalino. Double Borsalino would be okay, but I think getting rid of the, the, the attacker on board is better. I think we swing five, then six, and then do that play. We have a little bit of counter in hand too. Oof, we gotta watch out for that pudding. Forgot about that. A lot of rages will tech this in, so that's something you need to keep your um, keep your eye on. All right, so counter out of both, which is to be expected, but that's good for us. So we didn't get Moria, but we got the next best thing. It's like the two cards that we really would have wanted to play with Moria, but you can't because they're both four cost. All right, uh, there's ETG number one that we know of. So he has at least one ETG. He can transform up to three. He's a seven. So next turn he can use Judge if he doesn't minus. Now, even if he minuses one Dawn, he can still use Judge next turn. You got another Reiju. The search and draw power of Reiju is, is just crazy. Oh, man. <sighs> for all the bad luck that this guy had the first couple turns, he's, make, he's making up for it, man. I bet his, his starting hand was like these three GGs or something, and he's just like, I'm going to pray that I get. Yeah, okay. All right, what is he minus here? Probably four Selino. Or X Ray can just swing into that. No, no, it's probably gonna be porcelain. Oh yeah, you normally always want to minus the blocker. Uh oh, swinging six at life. I think we'll give him the counter. Kind of have to take this. Okay, that's good. All right. 
We have Dofi. But here's the thing, man. Dofi doesn't do us much good if he just plays judge and trashes the characters that we stunned. Yes, leader is locked, but oh, this is this is really sketch. If we don't though, then he just has like three HEG swinging us next turn. So I, I guess we have to either way, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of have to. Hopefully this works. I'd really like to get one life out of these three swings. Yes, okay. I think that gives us a shot. I think that gives us a shot if we can survive and... Uh, I mean, I don't know if we'll be able to go lethal, but the next turn, but if he was at, if he could stay at three life, I think that would just be kind of impossible for us. So we're kind of willing to give up all these cards, um, over the next turn or two. Oh, we whiffed on stage. That's good. Gotta raise you. Okay, so no judge. That's really good. But we know he has... He could have... I guess maybe he's looking for that other Ichiji. Maybe one more. Which he probably got here. Now with another three draw. Yep, okay. I think he, I think he already had one in hand, though, if I'm not mistaken. Um, man, if we had another Dofi, this would be really clutch. Who's he swinging at? Because we have one, two, three, four, five. I think we might have to go. He, five. I mean, normally they have more than this. He, only five. Okay. Um. I think we just counter out though. Because he didn't play a blocker. We need three swings to go through. I think we're just gonna go for game here. If we do nine, 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 uh, nine, 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 ten, five. I'm temp. Uh, this is this is tough. Cause the thing is, Raju always has a lot of counter. But he's gonna have one, two, three, four. We we think he has another Ichiji in hand too. Or Judge. I think we have to go for it. I think we're gonna go for it. The uh, yeah. I normally would tend to play a little reserved here, and I'm not sure if I'm splitting my Dawn up the best here. We could go seven. Ah, uh, he took the nine. But that does honestly doesn't mean much. We could go seven, and then seven. Seven, yeah, okay. I should have swung seven first. That was my bad. We'll go seven, seven, nine, ten. So, my bad. I just wanted to get the nine. Okay. This is, okay, we can count this now. So, this is two cards. Yeah, okay, I think we got it. I think we got it. Cause that's two cards at least then you won't be able to counter out of the nine so unless oh my god if he has all 2k counters he wins oh ggs no gg i tried you guys saw i tried to type it in Whew. And I think the thing is, I was pretty sure he had a judge. I don't think we saw him actually draw the judge. That's a little harder on Sim, but in real life, you can kind of like see their trash and see what they've they've gone through. We should have done a quick look through the trash. That was my bad. Um, but man, that was um, yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, I will say we did have a like okay, like I was saying, we got lucky early game. We got to steal the tempo. Um, and I think we were right in, in swinging with brand new. And we, the thing is, I had the foresight to know that he was going to play Niji if we played Borsalino. And if we had done that, we would have lost tempo. And I think we would have lost, just being honest. So when you're playing against Reju, 
Now they don't always have it, so you can only like there's only you can only be so careful, right? But if you're playing against Reiju and you go second, it's your four dawn turn. Uh, unless it's a card, I, it's hard to th even think of one that would give you enough value to risk putting it on the, on the board, just knowing that they can send it right back to hand. It's normally better, like if you're gonna do that, just play a searcher and then swing for seven with leader or something like that, right? Kind of like what we did. Um, or play the searcher the first turn and then swing five and seven or uh, some kind of combination like that, right? Because Reiju can, Reiju is like a very flexible kind of deck, right? Like they can, go aggro with the Ichijis early on but then they lose a ton of dawn and if they're struggling late game then you're just going to overtake them or they can play it slow and like bust out all these the four cost reju's drawing three cards every time they do and playing the occasional Ichiji right like kind of building up their board then they get to judge and then they do the crazy henshin transformation power ranger shit right so those are things to look out for I think we played it pretty well um and we didn't even see a Moria this Dofia was pretty clutch but uh, yeah, and then at the end there, um, I probably should have, I probably should have reordered it. My attacks, I should have swung seven, seven, nine, nine, ten. But uh, luckily, it didn't matter, and uh, we were able to clutch it out. So yeah, that was a that was a good one. All right, Yamato. So while it does suck giving them first, we gotta get we gotta take second here. It's just gonna be better for us. This is good. Um, Although we really want to block her. We really, really want to block her. I'm going to mulligan for Rosanante. We didn't get it. This is a way worse hand. <clears throat> we did get the baby five, though. So we play baby five. Yes, okay. We got the Rosanante. A turn too late, but it's okay. <clears throat> we have the counter. When you're playing against Yamato, and you're letting them go first, if you have 4k counter in hand, you're safe. You're fine. If not... You could be screwed so here's the thing too is like they have a hard choice they have to either go for life which they probably should or go for baby five and most of the time they're gonna go for baby um, most of the time they're gonna go for life right as a yellow green yamato player myself i this feels weird to be on the other side i'm not gonna lie because perona has a pretty good matchup in the yamato so first let's um let's do this because we got to be careful of their triggers uh, we'll take another 2k counter. 2k counters are pretty invaluable. They won't want to take this life, so they'll probably counter out. Or they'll take it. We don't know what, we don't know what build they're playing yet. But now that we have this blocker down, even with a like Onami banish, we're fine. <clears throat> and we have still decent enough counter in hand. Oh, okay. Alright. Swing in seven. That's fine. This is kind of why I, I kind of recommend not doing that most of the time. Just because like he just lost so much momentum by doing that. He did get more cards out of my hand, I guess. But I'm just going to search again with baby five here, you know. And I can KO this Ezo now. I can swing into this Ezo or just KO with x Drake, which is what I think I'm going to do. Um, And just get another Rosanante, huh? The 2k counter would be nice. No, I think this is what we do. We got five. Rest this. Oops. I definitely forgot to attack into leader. But it's okay. Wow. Already Hody. Dang. We also could have been playing around triggers there. So I'll just pretend that I didn't forget to attack with leader. Um. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Mm. I'm actually going to counter out of that just because we have the perfect amount. And we know we got another draw here. Oh, alright. <clears throat> this is good. We will definitely just set up with this now. Let's, um... Let's look for another Virgo, I guess. No, we'll get the counter event. That's our second one, so we, this is our last one. We gotta be careful about that. So this is six on. We're actually gonna keep Hody up. We're not gonna attack into Hody. Six, so we got one. 
Swing seven. We need to get some counter out of his hand or him to take more life. So basically, we'll just outlast the next turn. Okay, so he's playing... Hmm, actually still kind of too hard to tell <laughs> what uh, build he's playing. Still can't really tell, that's funny. Okay, these are all like tech cards essentially. Um, yeah, order doesn't matter here. So he could play another Hody. And that would hurt a lot, actually. But we still have Dofi. We might be okay. <clears throat> this is what makes Perona strong into Yamato. Is just like you can set things up while KOing whatever bodies they get on the board. Yes, once they get Hody or Yamato, it's a little bit harder. But by that point, like, look, we're at four life, there are two. Yes, Yamato has double attack, so you always got to be careful. As a Yamato player, you're just trying to, like, last long enough until you can swing for lethal, right? But this is weird. I get, he, I mean, he's probably playing, like, a Wano trigger kind of build. Something that I like to actually play. <clears throat> Hard to tell, though. Because you'd probably play, oh, there you go. Finally going for the baby five. Um, we'll just let that go. That probably means he doesn't have another Hody. And we did keep him at 2 life, so Yamato doesn't help him much here. He KO Drake or Rosanante. Oh, Zoro. That's actually really bad for us. Hmm. Okay, this is a tough decision. I'm gonna block this. Man. He'll have three swings with Zoro, but I think that'll be okay, actually. Yeah, I think we don't mind it. We don't mind it. Um, if he gets an Onami trigger here, that's really, really bad for us. But at this point, like, we gotta just go for it. Because he's going to have three huge swings coming in. Wow. And he's able... I mean, that's not that crazy. A 6 and a 5k, I guess. Yeah. Let's see. And if he has another Hody, we're in deep trouble. But I don't think we can lose. I don't think we can lose this turn. I don't know what I would do if I were him. Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. So... Uh, it, it doesn't seem like he's playing Noah's Ark, but maybe he is. He's playing a bunch of triggers. So that's either like an Onami, or a Wano trigger, or Noah's Ark if he's running the Spice, which would hurt us a lot, actually. Oh, he's going into Drake first. Uh, we'll let that go. We actually don't mind taking a little bit of life here. Now, if he's really smart, he'll attack one more time and then probably just restand it and leave it just in case I have another Doflamingo. I don't, but shh, don't tell him. He didn't put any Dawn on there, though. So what is he? Momonosuke blocker, probably, to play Hiyori into life. That's actually still, that's really bad for us. So if he stops there with Zoro and then plays Momo Blocker, then we're in trouble. We're in a really tough spot. Oh, okay. So he didn't have the blocker. Man. Um, if we had a Kuzan on field or something, we just, we want, uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Now that we don't have another Doflamingo. Hmm. I don't know if he's running L4, but we know he's running You're the One Who Should Disappear. So if this is 9, we could swing 11. And that would force all three cards out of his hand, unless he has L4. 
I think that's what we do. I think we swing 11 at Hody, 5 at Life, and then play these two blockers. Yeah, that seems decent. <clears throat> and then, like, if he has another Hody, he can... Ooh, okay, that's good. If he has another Hody, he might be able to just go for game. Oh, he's running Batzor too. Okay, this is like a spicy... This is a pretty spicy build. This is like as trigger heavy as you can get. Um, damn, I guess this doesn't matter too much, but we'll keep the 2k counter. I need to keep all three blockers up here. So just prage that he doesn't have Hody. Yeah, I mean, we didn't see, we bottom decked a Moria early on with Surge, which I thought might be bad, but this is, I mean, yeah, we haven't seen a lot of the cards, like our top end, unfortunately. We, it's good we got the Dofi though. I would think we would have lost if we didn't have this. <clears throat> he might be, just be thinking about it. Hopefully we can take a life. He might sing with leader first. Okay. Oh, okay. So he's going big boy swings here. Oh, yeah, he's attacking Dofi. I don't think we mind. Oh, I want to counter out of this so bad. But we can't. Uh, this could be bait. No, he only has six Dawn. Okay, it's not bait for Hody then. I think we don't mind blocking one more time with Borsalino because he can't rest. He, can, he has no no more ways to rest Sabo. Because if, if he wants... He can rest this with Amaru. I don't know if he runs Amaru, though. It seems like he kind of doesn't. This is a hard deck to predict, because he's running a lot of cards that you don't normally see in a Yamato deck. Or that are, like, the more uncommon ones. Even, like, Beige. I like to run Beige in a lot of mine. <clears throat> but I actually took it out of my most recent, like, Wano build. I'm just running Satori instead now. That's fine. I think we block. If he attacks again, I think we block, actually. Just because he can't kick. We'll take the double, double attack. And if he has Onami, we can still counter out of it. We just lose all the cards in our hand. I think we have to keep Dofi alive here. What does he have for? Let's see. Unfortunately, we can't go for lethal next turn, which is really, really bad. But we can just swing heavy into Zoro. If we can get rid of Zoro... I don't know. Let's see. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Then this sucks, but it's what we got to do. I figured that might be what he was waiting for, but we were ready for it. Having zero cards was really bad. Oh, we got Moria. Okay. All right. Oh my gosh. This puts us this puts us in such a terrible spot because I want to Oh man. I want to swing heavy into that Zoro. If we don't get the Zoro off the board, we probably lose. But if we don't get Moria on the board, I think we lose as well. Because it'll be one, two, double attack, and one. And then if he has a rush, ah. Hard to tell, honestly. This is actually hard to tell. If we swing 12, it'll be 10, 11, 13. He would just need 2k counter. 12 would be 10, 11, 12. So if he has the year, the one that disappears. He would have to have, those would have to be two 2k counters, which I'm willing to, I'm willing to risk it here. Because we, we have to play risky or else we're just not going to, yeah, okay, we, we got lucky there. <clears throat> and now we play Moria. So we play Borsalino active and I want to play a searcher, but I think we need the blocker. 
And this is why Morio is so good. That was a really lucky top deck. So the unluckiness of not seeing him earlier was made up for. And now we have a shot here. Okay, that's really bad. <laughs> he can just swing 5k now. That's really, really bad. And if he has another Onami, then we're just super screwed. I still... Uh, he could have a Hody. But he wouldn't have played that if he had a Hody. There would be no reason to do that. And fortunately for us, the uh, starter deck 13, the 5 cost rush ace, is not on the sim yet. So what does he do here? Oh no! He forgot! He forgot! Never forget! Never forget! He's played so well up until now, too. That's such an unfortunate... We'll take it, though. I mean, that kind of thing happens in real life, you know? What? Oh, Rosanante? Okay. I thought my guy was about to swing 6k <laughs> with Hiori into here. <clears throat> what are you doing, dude? Oh, is he, if he's going for... Um... I was going to say, you could try and KO Doflamingo. But we're still going to have three attacks, like, either way, right? Yeah, uh, unfortunately we can't do anything about it. Hmm. All right, he has two cards in hand. I don't think I have a way. <clears throat> I just do have three life though, so I really need to be careful here. I mean, essentially I can clear board can clear Onami and Hiyori. Let me see. If I go 9 with Borsalino, I'd have to go 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Mm, this is really, really risky. But if I play the blocker, two blockers will have one get rid of the two characters I'll have two characters I'll have two blockers I'll have leader and a character and I'll have two blockers uh, I think we play it safe here I'm gonna rest this just for now too the thing is though we actually want to KO <clears throat> Izo and Hiori because if he does run the Momo blocker Onami's not a target so he can't heal life with that oh this is so risky though mm. this is so risky Every fiber of my being wanted to go for lethal there, but it, we would have been risking a bit. We did, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because now it may be even harder for us to go lethal next turn. And if he has another Hody, like if he top decked Hody, because he would have played it already. Like we know one of these, these two cards are not Hody. We can kind of safely assume that. So unless he just top decked uh, Hody or something else, then, you know. If he attacks into Moria, that's a good sign for us. Ooh, that's a good sign. That means he doesn't see lethal this turn. And he would have played Hody first. And we got rid of his Momo option there. Oh, he has just enough. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Alright, that's pretty lucky. So we KO... <clears throat> we KO Nami. We swing 9k at life. And then we play Moria and two more blockers. I 
think that's the play. We got rewarded for being patient. Top taking two Morios like that is pretty lucky though. I'm gonna be completely honest. Active, rested. <clears throat> we are starting back. This is like starting the loop over where if he can rest this Porcelino, we're still in trouble. But he can't go for lethal anymore. And I think with two Morias, we have a shot now. He only has one life, so like, oh, okay, there you go. But still, oh, that's decent. That's decent, but not enough, right? Honestly, at this point, <clears throat> I'd probably go for Moria. I don't know if I would attack life. What was it? Sabo and a Tashigi. That would have been really good life to get, I'm not gonna lie. If he can't, oh, okay. All right, so let's just be smart about this. We know he's running beige. So I think we prioritize Moria over the Borsalino. He can KO the Borsalino, but if he blocks one of these Morias, we just lost a lot of, um, a lot of attacking power. Okay, what's the trigger? Oh my gosh, this is scary. I mean, we got it. I'm pretty sure we got it, but this is so scary. Oh, uh, it could be Amaru. That's terrible. If that's an Amaru. Oh, that's why we did that. All right. Um, uh, did we just go nine? Nine and nine? I think that gets us the game. Yeah, I don't think there's any world where he can get out of that. Get out of two 9Ks. Yep, okay. Alright. GG. Uh, real quick, before we move on to the next one, just want to talk about that. So you saw when I could have gone for lethal, right? I think we saw that he had the, you're the one who should disappear. And, like, I'm so used to, as a Yamato player, like, going for lethal. But when you know... You have like possibilities like Moria or another 10 drop Dofi coming your way. Like we got a little unlucky at the beginning, not seeing the top end that we wanted, but we got really, really lucky at the end. But I also just like was patient and played it smart, right? And then, then we won, we ended up winning. So um, with Perona, you can take your time. It's one of those decks where like Yamato, you feel like you have to kind of just go for it because you don't have a lot of blockers. You don't have a lot of defensive plays. Perona like is the, the defensive play, right? So. If you're like me and your brain is always in like, can I go for lethal? Playing Perona, you might just need to take a step back, be patient, and uh, look at your look at your options, find your outs, right, and play to them. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you had fun watching. I hope it was helpful or like informative. I learned a lot. I have not played Perona that much, so this was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, we didn't get a Moria match, which is one of the ones I was really looking forward to. But it is a bit grindy, and they're similar decks, so I think. The ones that we did get are still really important and will help you. And, uh, you know, if I have enough time later on, I'll make another Perona video. But I think up next is going to be Moria. And then uh, if you guys want to let me know after Moria what OP06 leader or what kind of other leader deck breakdowns you want to see from me. Um, yeah, please let me know. I'm going to be doing more Yamato stuff with like the Sky Island build, the Fortress build, the Fishman build. Just because I love Yamato and uh, playing all the different decks is so much fun. So keep an eye out for all those videos, but for now, just thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.